I mean, seriously, have you seen a better lamb shank than that? How good does that look? I mean, look at the color on it. It is so tender. Mm. Mm. Go away, this is mine. Hi, I'm Chewy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the easiest and the best tasting lamb shanks in a Weber kettle. We'll also make a reduction sauce that's gonna knock your socks off. So just sit back, grab a drink or two, and let's get into it. So I picked up these lamb shanks from Gippsland Premium Meats, and generally you want one shank per adult. And to prep these, all we need to do is remove any excess fat. So using a sharp knife, just take off any loose bits of fat or anything that's overly thick. These actually aren't too bad, there's only a little bit. Once they're all cleaned up, we're ready for some seasoning. Is it too early to like this video? I don't think so. Let's make our own rub today and we can go with my tried and tested lamb rub. And this consists of salt, lemon pepper, rosemary, thyme, garlic and onion powder. Now I find it best to transfer your rubs to a shaker. It's just easier to apply it to your food. If you don't have a rub shaker, use a bowl and use your hands. Eh, simple. I'm going to be using a binder today on my lamb shanks and that's going to be olive oil. Just pour some over and then using your hand, just rub it in and make sure it all gets coated. Flip them over and do the other side. Don't forget the ends. And now we can give them a good coating of the lamb rub. Just remember to apply it from about 30 centimeters above your food. This just allows the rub particles to separate before they hit. And that way you'll get a nice even bite on every piece of your lamb. Once they're all covered, put them aside and let's get the barbecue ready. I'm gonna be using a 57 centimeter Weber kettle today and I'm gonna be utilizing the snake method because I wanna be smoking indirectly at 135 degrees Celsius. So how I'll do that is by setting briquettes up in what is known as the snake method or sometimes called the fuse method. I'll then add 12 briquettes to a chimney starter and light them up. Once they're all ashed over, I'm gonna dump them on one end of that snake to act as a fuse. I'll also add some smoking wood. I'm gonna add two chunks of cherry and two chunks of sugar gum. Now I'll place the first chunk right next to the lit charcoal and the other chunks I'm just gonna place around the snake 50 mil apart. I'm gonna add the grill and an ambient temp probe. And I'll put the lid on, making sure the lid vent is directly opposite our lit fuel. All the vents are wide open. I'm gonna use the ambient temp probe to track our temp. Once it gets to about 50 degrees under that target temp, I'm gonna start closing down that bowl vent. By closing down that bowl vent before we hit our target temp, we're not gonna overshoot it. And we can just make final adjustments just to settle the temp before we put our food on. We've come up to temp so we can finally get the shanks in the Weber. So just placing the shanks on the opposite side of the grill to where the lit fuel is. And I'm also going to add a temp probe into one of them. I'll just set that internal temp probe to 70 degrees Celsius and it's gonna take about two to three hours for our shanks to reach that internal temp. So it's beer time. Or wine, whiskey, bourbon, scotch, or soft drink if that's what you like. Today I'm smoking with an indirect heat of 135 degrees Celsius. And all up, this cook's gonna take anywhere from five to six hours. Or for those of you who like to use my beer timer, you're looking at a 12 beer cook. Now, for those of you who reckon my beer timer's out, by all means, drink more. Just set an alarm though. We are gonna need some braising liquid and I want this to be warm when we add it. So let's make it now. So into a saucepan, we can add some chopped tomatoes, some red wine, ginger beer and beef stock, celery, carrots, onion and garlic. A good hit of honey, some salt, pepper, and some dried vegetable stock. Now over a high heat, stir this until you bring it to nearly a boil and then remove it from the heat. Now the ingredients for this can be mixed up, so go nuts and experiment. You can change different types of broths, you can change beer instead of the wine. Experiment. We are two hours down and the shanks have reached an internal temp of 70 degrees Celsius. We've got some great pullback on the bones and the bark has formed, so we can get these off now. Now these are already smelling amazing, but we've still got plenty more to add to that with that braising liquid. And now we can just add that warmed up braising liquid and we can now put these back into the Weber. And we are now gonna cook these until they are probing tender. And that'll be anywhere between 95 and 99 degrees Celsius. And it's gonna take us another two to three hours to reach that. 
Lamb can handle being pushed a little further on internal temp. So I've actually taken the internal temp probe out because every hour now, we're going to flip those shanks in that brazing liquid and we'll just check and see how they're probing. Now to speed up this part of the cook, you can cover them up with foil, but I prefer not to because I like to create that bark and I like to keep some of it. The shanks have been brazing for an hour now, so it's time to give them their first flip. Now they are looking incredible. So just flip them all over. The shanks are all reading about 80 degrees internally, so they still have a little bit to go. We're just gonna let it ride out. We're gonna leave them for another hour, come back, flip them over, check them, and see how they're going. The lamb shanks are ready, and we can get them off the heat now. Oh, they smell absolutely awesome. Probing nice and tender. The skewer just goes straight in, straight out. No resistance on all of them. So we can get the shanks out of the brazing liquid now. We're just going to put them on two pieces of thick foil and we're going to wrap that up. And we're also going to wrap them in an old towel and put them aside to rest. The shanks can now get a good rest while we finish off our reduction. If you don't want to put them in an old towel, you can also put them into an oven set at 70 degrees Celsius. Those of you new to my channel won't know that I recommend you rest lamb longer. Trust me, it's worth it. Now we need to finish off our sauce. Place the pan with the braising liquid over a high heat source. We're going to add some beef stock. You just want to stir in everything that was left over from the braising liquid in with the new beef stock we just added until it's all warmed up. Just keep scraping the bottom. You want to get all of that flavour loosened up and mixed in. All right, the pan juices are nice and hot, so we can now strain them. Make sure you push on everything that's sitting in the sieve. That way you'll get all that juice into the pan. Then last but not least, if you haven't seen one of these, it's a fat separator. Just pour the liquid into that and you'll see that the oil floats to the top while our liquid or our sauce is down the bottom and that's what we want to keep a hold of. So now all we have to do is hold the fat separator over a new clean saucepan and we're just going to hold the trigger and allow our liquid to come out but none of the oil. So after doing all that, all we're left with is a super rich flavoured reduction. All we've got to do now is just try a little bit before we serve it up. <laughs> that is awesome. Look at that. We turned a braising liquid into a reduction. Now we sound all fancy. Now smoked shanks will pair with any type of vegetable, but peppery butter mashed potato has to be my favourite. And all this really needs is a couple of tablespoons of that reduction. How good does that look? All right, let's dig in. Oh, look how tender that is. That is just falling off. This smells amazing. Are you kidding? I know I say this a lot, but that should be illegal. That's just melting in my mouth. And the flavors are so intense. As always, cheers for watching.